Technology is no longer an industry but a layer. This is a statement by venture capitalist Julie Meyer, who built Ariadne Capital in 2000 in order to back technology-enabled firms. But many things have changed in the last 14 years, so Julie Meyer joins us today to discuss the present and future of technology-enabled firms. Welcome. Hi. So first of all, let's start with the current economic situation. Many people get scared in a recession. But is it actually a really bad time to invest and to start a new business? You know, it's, a, it's an interesting question because it's difficult to kind of gauge um, market timing. People say that timing has a lot to do with hitting it big and being successful and so forth. But real entrepreneurs are just obsessed to, to make something happen. They're compelled that their vision of the market doesn't exist. And so um, entrepreneurs are actually pretty um, neutral in the sense that they don't think, well, I'm going to wait three years or I might have missed the curve and so forth. They tend to just want to get out to the market. They want to test their, their thesis in the market and so forth. Um, it's interesting because I, um, I, because I travel so much, I'm in different markets. In New York and San Francisco, nobody's talking about climbing out of a recession. And in certain parts of Europe, people will still, still say, well, you know, we're climbing our way out of the recession and so forth. And so even on market timing, you have to say, well, are we in a bull market or getting out of a recession and so forth? So I would say that there's no perfect information about what the market's doing. It's really about whether or not you can engineer a market entry and talk to the right uh, potential early adopters, which is going to dictate your timing. So in technology-enabled firms, what do you think of the trends? for the next few years. Well, you said it yourself, technology is a layer, right? And so if you're not technology enabled, um, how can you be high growth? So we actually are saying that if you want to be a high growth firm, um, which most people do, unless you're a kitchen table business, unless you're really just a lifestyle you know, business, you are leveraging technology. And the good news is that most of that technology has been standardized and kind of componentized. It may not be off the shelf, but um, it, it's going to basically empower you. We, we had just a you know, group of entrepreneurs come into the office just the other day who wanted to set up a community website for private schools, talking about how they could um, basically give information, a little bit like Mumsnet, but a little bit more structured. And the good news is for those two entrepreneurs, they can get the technology that they need to do something pretty simple and basic, right? But if you're going to do something even really potentially disruptive in the market, even then the technology that you're going to need to do something which shakes up the telecoms industry or the retail industry and so forth is probably not going to be the technology but the business model. So you're talking about people, so you don't only invest in businesses, but you have to invest in people as well. Um, what do these people need to have in order for you to invest in them? We're looking for a track record of excellence, right? And that, that doesn't mean that we're looking for certain degrees that people have gone to certain business schools or that they've only had a job on Wall Street or only had a job as a director level person. We're actually looking for people who as they tell their story and they share with you who they are, they can, you can see that they've had impact in the world at every stage, that they've consistently tried to be excellent, right? They can't be in control of everything, but they've been persistent in their pursuit of excellence and impact in the market. And that they're honest, right? That, they're, that they believe, they're confident enough to believe that they can be good and successful, that they don't need to be dishonest and underhanded, right? And you would think that would be obvious, but you'd be surprised at how many people kind of think, well, you know, I'm willing to do do anything to be successful and anything can include a lot of unethical and illegal behavior as well. So, you know, we're just looking for straight shooters, people who are strong, confident, who, who bring good people around them that are, are smart enough to listen. You know, they, they realize they don't know everything. They might still listen to advice and say, hey, I'm going the opposite direction. But people who will categorically not listen to you, that's a bad sign. Tunnel vision um, is, is not good, right? Not having information is not good. So you've got to be open, but then you have to have the confidence and listen to your gut feeling that you, you, know, you listen to where you believe that the market is. And where does your job and your role end with backing these people and helping them? I don't think it ever really ends. I mean, many, many of the entrepreneurs that we've backed have, be, have become close personal friends. And I'm really, you know, so, um, uh, it, I mean, it's just the best part of my life that I, I'm able to become good friends with many of these entrepreneurs because we've shared 
a journey, and um, you know, and I've tried to do as much as I as much as I can. And uh, I think the, the the role of the venture capitalist is really a lot is psychology, right? It's it's walking them back from the edge when they're threatening to do something absolutely crazy and saying you really don't want to do that because it's not going to get you where you want to go. And I'm just reminding you where you want to go. So if you do that, you're not going to get there, and you know, do what you will. But I think it's a lot about influence, not about control. I think what uh, the female leadership qualities bring to it, I'm not just saying because I'm a woman, but just in general, female leadership, which men can have as well, it's all about influencing people. It's carrots, not stick, right? So I think in venture capital, if you're really getting into kind of um, aggressive stick behavior as opposed to carrot and influence, I think very, very rarely do you come out in the right place. It's all about agreeing with people um, the, the overall alignment that needs to, to be there. Because startups, and in, in even later stage startups, are very fragile things, right? You're talking about ego, market dynamics. There's lots of stuff that can go wrong. Now, how many people does it take to visit and to see in order to invest in one? Well, you know, pretty quickly I can tell whether or not I think I can back somebody and whether they have the stuff to be a successful uh, successful business pretty quickly. I mean, I've been doing this for a very long time, for the better part of you know 20 years, and so it's um, it, you have a kind of gut, gut instinct, and then you're really saying, are we the best people in the market to do this? You know, can we help them? They have these three critical challenges in the first 18 months. Can we get it, these things together for them? Is the chemistry there, and so forth? Um, so it takes meetings to kind of put together the plan in terms of the things that we have to check for due diligence and all the rest of it. And we have a pretty robust series of things that we go through. But pretty quickly you come to a conclusion that it's a yes or it's a no. And then you're trying to really just kind of cross the T's and dot the I's. But have you ever regretted not investing in someone? Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, there's just, there's, there's a capacity issue because we, um, you know, we're inundated. We see all of the best deals in the market. You know, that's why I set up Ariadne is from the moment I sold First Tuesday, entrepreneurs were reaching out to me and I said, oh my God, I need to, I need to build a platform here. So we see well over, um, you know, a hundred um, opportunities every month. Now, even with the 20 people that work at Ariadne Capital, there's just a capacity issue. So there, there are things and it's hard too, because I have the kind of personality that I want want to do, I, I never want to miss something, right? That's, that's in my psychology is that I just want to, you know, very competitive, always want to, you know, be backing the right people. So it's difficult when you realize that for capacity reasons, you just can't tackle everything and that you have to kind of pick things, right? Um, but yeah, no, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure we've missed, uh, we, I know we've missed some things um, because, you know, we just, we just didn't have the capacity to get the deals done. Do we have any names that of people that now are successful that you couldn't invest in them? Um, I'm not going to mention names so much, <laughs> but uh, they're definitely names that you would know. Definitely names you would know. So uh, many people are now using crowdfunding in order to kick off their companies. Do you think that's the future as well for smaller companies and startups? Well, we're, we're acquiring a crowdfunding business right now. And um, part of the reason why we're doing that is because we can see an outstanding management team in one of them that we think uh, we should bring in and you know, further develop the Ariadne investment platform. Um, and I, think, I don't think all crowdfunding sites are really the same. I think some are just trying to match investors and investment opportunities. I think the ones that are trying to manage the investments for the investors, I think that's a much more interesting space to be. Um, but you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of capital out there. I think what crowdfunding has really shown people is that this, this kind of black box of mysterious how do these deals get done, it, it, there's a de democratization to that that crowdfunding has made really clear to a lot of the market, right? So for those of us who were working in, say, investment banking or corporate finance 15 years ago, um, you know, it was really only high net worth individuals that could see some of these deals. Now you're a doctor or a dentist out in Cornwall, you can see those deals, right? Now I think that's a really positive thing because the more people and the more capital that we get behind these deals, the United Kingdom where I happen to live, there's a lot of money here. But not all of that money goes to backing the entrepreneurs which are transforming society, right? Not just the mom and pop shops, but the technology enabled startups. So if we can get more of that money coming from unlikely resources, you know, in the country, I think that's a really good thing. Thank you very much. It's okay. We're done. Okay.